Steve Dotto here. Today we're going to continue our look at Eventbrite, the event management and booking system. Uh, last video we took a look at an overview of how Eventbrite works. We're now going to take a look in this video at the ticketing system within Eventbrite. And tickets are of course the heart of event as far as getting people out. So a lot of thought and a lot of control is important with our ticketing. When you set up your event right event, you've started this event, uh, you create all of your event details. It's working in a content management system, much like working in WordPress. You put in the title and the venue name, give it the address. When you're first setting up your event, it auto populates the map. You can upload your logo. You can see I've done all these things. Very important is I put in the date and time of the event, which will be translated into my tickets a little bit later on the process. And then you've got a kind of a promotion window or event description window, which is basically just a web window. You can either work in the WYSIWYG editor or import HTML code into this to create a nice little description of your event. And then we get down to the fun part. I find ticketing, the ticketing fun because ticketing can represent money coming in, which is a good thing. Now, there are three different ticket types within Eventbrite. You have free tickets, you have the paid tickets, and then you have tickets by donation. Now, if your tickets are free, then there are no fees from Eventbrite. How much does it cost to use Eventbrite for tickets? Well, you don't pay a, you don't pay an overall fee. You don't pay a, a, a software as a service fee. Instead, they base all of the ticket, uh, all of their revenue on actual ticket sales. So if you collect money for an event, their service fee, basically the fee that they're going to collect on the ticket is 2.5% of the ticket plus 99 cents a ticket. And there's a cap on that. And then you've also got credit card clearing fees. So you've got two different fees that are attached to any ticket. And you're going to have that anyways. You're going to have to pay for whatever the processing of the ticket is. And you're also going to have to pay for the financial side, be it PayPal or credit card. Those fees you're going to have. Three and a half percent, maybe a little bit higher than you would get with a normal um, with a, with a with a merchant account, but it's not it's not out of the realm of uh, uh, what's fair. It's certainly a very reasonable fee to be paying for your uh, for the credit card processing. Now, we can get an idea for what the fees are in different countries with a chart that they have here. But I said there was a cap on how much they charge for each ticket, and that's illustrated here. So in the Canada and the States, two and a half percent of the ticket price plus 99 cents up to a maximum of roughly $10. That's the fee cap. That's the most they're going to charge. So if you're selling more expensive tickets, your users or your 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 customers are not going to be paying outrageous processing fees. So they've they've kind of kept it I think in a very very fair range here as far as their fees go. Now let's go about actually creating tickets and walk through that process. So let's create a new paid ticket. Now typically speaking, you're going to have multiple price levels within any event. You might have children and adult tickets, you might have coupons, you might have a whole different variety of different pricing structures within your event. And you can manage them all within Eventbrite. And you do them sometimes in several different areas, but you have control over all of those things. Let's say for this event, we're going to start with an early bird ticket. So we're going to put in early bird and now the ticket quantity. Of course, the size of your venue is going to determine how many people can attend an event. Uh, but also for things like early bird tickets, you don't want to sell all of your tickets at the discounted early bird fee. So I'm going to say we have 15 tickets available at a price of $95. And then once I've done that, Eventbrite then works out how much my fees are going to be on that ticket. So here we see the fees are going to be $6.69. Now I've got radio buttons below here that allow me to pass the fees on to the buyer, absorb the fees myself. And if I do that, the pricing will change. The total, the total ticket price to the buyer is going to be $95. The fees are the same. It's just, I'm paying them or we can customize it per ticket type. If we do that, we go into the settings and we can choose from here. We can choose to absorb the credit card fees and pass on the event right fee or pass on the uh, Eventbrite fee and absorb the credit card fee. We've got all of those different options. I, I like that one. Absorb the credit card fee and pass on the Eventbrite fee to the buyer. I'm going to say that. And within this dialog box here, I can also do things like adding a ticket description. Once I've created the, uh, the ticket price, I can then apply that ticket, apply that pricing. And now in my description, we should see here, let me go scroll down. I'm scrolling all over the place. There we go. We have the early bird tickets ready to sell. Let's add one other. Let's add a regular ticket price as well. So we're going to add another paid ticket. And we're going to say just regular admission. Mission. And let's say that we've got uh, 85 tickets available. 
we can seat 100 people at our event. And we're going to charge, what's the price? Let's charge 149 for it. 149 for this event. And again, it's going to pick up the same preferences that we had in the previous one, uh, but we can make any changes that we want as well to the uh, to the uh, fee structure of that ticket. And let's, uh, oh, so for some reason it's not passing on the fee. Absorb the fees, oh, absorb the credit card fees. That's what I want to do. I want to apply that. And let's do this for this one here as well. Absorb the credit card and pass on, there we go, and absorb that. There we go. So now we see that the buyer for the uh, $95 tickets is actually gonna be paying 98.36, and the purchaser for this ticket is gonna be paying 153.71. So there we go. So we can save that now. And let's take a look at the preview. Let's take a look at how this looks on the actual event right page, because this is what our customers or our people that were promoting the event to are going to be seeing. And we see the event is nicely laid out. We see the, the different layout structure. So we're not in the editing mode now. We're in the mode that they would see visiting the event right page. And as we scroll down, we see our, oh, sorry, it's near the top. There we go. We see our ticket information. And if we want to order one of these tickets, we can choose it. We can click on order now. And that then brings us into, there we go, the ability to become a ticket buyer, purchase, do all the purchasing information in a secure site and actually purchase the ticket. So that is the simple basis for setting up your tickets. Now, what about some of the options we have? Here's one option, entering a promotional code. Promotional codes are great ways to offer tickets and do other, uh, do other promotions for a ticket. So let's create a new promotional code. Click on promotional codes, and that brings us into the manage promotional codes console. Let's create a new code. The code is going to allow us to assign a discount to whoever has access to that code. Now that can actually be more than that. You can actually, if you look on code type, you can actually set access, which means uh, that somebody needs the code in order to actually even purchase tickets for an event. Uh, but in this case here, we're gonna open, set this up as a discount code, and then we're gonna choose the amount that we're gonna discount the tickets. So we can choose it as a fixed price or a percentage. So if I put in 15% off the ticket price, that will then, if they know the code, I gotta give the name, I'm gonna give the code sample. If they know the code name sample, then they are gonna get a 15% reduction on the ticket price in the ordering process. I can choose if this is just for early bird tickets or for regular admission or for both. So I've got that and then I can also set the number of uses so that it can, be a, it can be a limited offering. So that would be another way of setting up the early bird tickets is setting up an early bird discount, which is only 15 times that it can be used and then it's done. So there's lots of different ways that you can creatively use it. You can also set dates and parameters on when the tickets are available. They're available now and when they end. So again, for things like early bird tickets or for, for uh, tickets where uh, you're going to be adding on, say a meal that you have to order, you can set a cutoff date for that particular ticket. Once you set up the promo code, and I call this one sample, I want to remember, yep, sample, uh, you're going to save it. And then when people are ordering tickets, they will be able to take advantage of that code. So let's just go in and let's see, if, let's see how it works. I'm going to go in and preview the, the event again, and I'm going to enter the promotional code sample. Ooh, I should click in it first, sample. And let's see what happens to my ticket pricing. Yes, look. The ticket prices have all dropped accordingly based on the discount of 15%. Isn't that slick? This is the kind of control we have within Eventbrite for managing our tickets. And I am going to call it a day now. Uh, there's so much more to the whole ticket area. We'll be doing more videos around tickets and how we manage them how we communicate with our customers, the sort of information that we gather from them and how we communicate back to them after they've purchased the tickets. But that is for future videos. I hope you have found this particular video useful. If you have, please give us a like. We certainly appreciate the kudos. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.